Hello and welcome to episode 48 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show we are talking about how it's important to understand your own culture and what changes need to be made around the adoption of cloud computing. Hi, Dave. It's exciting to have you back on the C-Suite show again this week. Yeah, it's great to be back. And this is kind of a, a topic that's near and dear to my heart. In fact, I wrote the uh, post that we're referring to. <laughs> you did indeed. Great article, by the way. Um, and so, look, you know, opening question then, which will come as no surprise to you. Is culture on the radar screens of the enterprise C-Suites? I don't think it is. I, I, I think that uh, some organizations are looking at culture as something that needs to be changed. Um, but it's at, at typical, at tactical levels, you know, they're trying to change innovation, they're doing restructuring, things like that. But as far as changing the core culture to accept cloud computing and any kind of new innovative technology is something that I, I don't think enterprises really kind of understand how important it is going forward. I mean, we talked about on this show the brand apocalypse that's coming where we're going to see a normalization in these large companies because they're unable to keep up with the changes and the innovation that's occurring within the smaller you know organizations. And so they're not necessarily hitting the panic button yet, but you know, in the, in the areas like the retail sector and some of the healthcare sectors, they are tr trying to figure out how to become more innovative and creative. And they realize they really don't have a culture that's really going to promote that. And you're going to have to really do that to leverage technology such as cloud, to leverage DevOps, to leverage um, you know, AI technology and serverless technology, all the things that are coming down the line. Uh, and I really have doubts that many of these large organizations are going to be able to change their culture in time you know, based on the fact they haven't started yet. So it's the single most difficult thing for them to do. As I always tell them, you know, we're good with the technology. I can build anything with enough time and money uh, that's going to solve their issues. But your ability to have the people to adopt it, you know, leverage that technology in very innovative and creative ways and as a force multiplier for your business. Uh, is something that I don't think people really have addressed. And I think it's something that should be on the radar screen. Um, you know, as I said in the article, you know, the Jack Nicholson from Few Good Men, he used to, you know, he said the key word, key line, you can't handle the truth. You know, he screamed at uh, Tom Cruise, Cruise's character, well, I'll replace that with cloud. You know, I think many times the enterprises, they can't handle the cloud and they're going to have to figure out a way to do that before they're going to be able to be successful with that technology or any technology. Yeah, so true. Look, I was really hoping at that point you were going to break into a sort of a, a Jack Nicholson kind of voicing, and uh, like yeah. you, like you like you like you're getting extremely frustrated around a board of C C suites, and you're going to sort of you know grab them by the lapels, and uh, and go for that line, but um, obviously not. <laughs> yeah, yell, yelling at yelling at people doesn't really get you get you that far. I found that out a few times, so it's uh, good yeah. to have rational conversations with them. Yeah, they just can't handle the cloud. They just need to get their head around that. You're, you're, you're so right. And I think it's, um, you know, not only within in organizations, the cultural thing, but, but when you get into the depths of the organization as well, within the, the layers of cloud, I think that's very important, you know, because you've got a cloud team coming in or, or people that are coming in integrating cloud with existing systems. And I think it's there's a lot of frustrations there where you've got people such as developers that are, you know, typically going to embrace the change and you've got operational staff that, you know, are always traditionally looking to sort of keep that or, or understand the stability of the business. And I think there's there's more often than not that you've got that conflict there, um, unnecessarily so, because if it's led from a, a C-level point of view, there should be that that, that sort of a, a, a smooth transient between the two, um, you know, in an ideal world. Um, you know, in an ideal world, Dave, look, what would you like to see happen, I guess, is the, the, the question I should be asking you. Yeah, that's it. That that's a good way to actually um, to turn it on me. That you know, as so far as somebody who's bringing up the problem versus how you solve it, and I think that's a fair thing. I think the reality is that you're going to have to either train, replace, uh, or retire a good deal of people within these organizations. And so, if you can't make them think innovatively and creatively, that doesn't mean we're going to not be able to find a place for them within the organization. But the core group of IT technologists you know, really should be armed with the ability to become preformed, innovative, creative, 
and the ability to kind of operate without bounds. I mean, one of the things that the, the big thing that uh, uh, drives me crazy about some cultures is everybody's waiting to be told to do something and they're not being proactive and they're not thinking freely and, and logically and innovatively in the space. And you just need to get those sorts of people within the organization. The, the problem is if you're a bigger enterprise, except those sorts of people typically aren't attracted to enterprises. They're attracted to startups and research organizations and things like that where they can move a little faster and you can if you have to ask permission for lots of uh, from lots of people just to get anything done. As the case when I work for a large, you know, enterprises through the time. So if you're able to remove those barriers, you're able to prove that you're able to remove those barriers. You're able to hire people, and they're going to be successful within these new organizations. You're able to retrain people, um, and then you're going to be able to change your culture. But it's something you have to basically adopt from a systemic level from everybody within the organization. If you have passive aggressive people who are, you know, pushing back on this and, uh, you know, uh, scuttling things and you know, the political stuff that goes on within these organizations, they have to be identified and removed or else you're not going to have a chance. And this is serious stuff because this comes down to the survivability of the company. This is not just increasing profits by 10 percent over the next couple of years. This is actually you being a company within five years without having to sell to a competitor or having to sell within the industry or even go bankrupt because you're unable to keep up with the change in innovation that's occurring in your space and you're going to get disrupted right out of the market. Yep, yep, great advice. No, thanks, good answer. I mean, it moves us on nicely really to your, uh, your, your top three tips as well. I mean, if we haven't already, uh, if you haven't already given too many of them away with that answer, but it'd be great to hear your uh, top three tips there, Dave, on this. Yeah, first, changing the culture is not just an IT function. That's the big one. So if we're trying to change the culture with an IT, then it has to occur, occur systemically within the entire company. And so from the top level down to the CEO, to the COO, to the CFO, CIO, and IT, as well as how we do sales and how we understand the business, that has to be a complete systemic cultural change. This is not something we can do in isolation and really kind of hope for the hope for the best. This is something where it has to be a cultural change within the organization as a whole. Um, they're going to eat lunch together. They're going to be communicating together. And if you have the same sort of bureaucracy that exists within the company, then IT is basically going to run into the same bureaucracy as they start building and deploying systems. So you must introduce Training um, and hiring plans that are aligned with cloud computing technology or really any, any technology. We talked about the ability to kind of replace, retire, our, um, uh, and hire people. Your ability to go off and find the talent and train the talent and get a plan implemented in place is absolutely going to be critical. And then you need to understand the realities as soon as possible. So uh, I can't stress this enough. We, you know, talked about this. You know, I talked about this in. Uh, several different articles and interviews, you know, five years ago and three years ago. And you look at the enterprises today, even though they see the disruption occurring in the marketplace, they see Amazon taking their business, they see in the insurance markets being disrupted and, um, you know, taxi, taxi cab driver versus Uber and Lyft. And then there's lots of other disruptors in the space as well. Um, there's no fire in the belly to make any kind of changes to the culture to adopt the technology. And I see them failing if they don't change the culture, because the culture is not able to accept the technology, work with the technology, therefore I wouldn't even deploy it yet. So this is one of those problems that's gonna be extremely difficult and expensive to solve, but we have to solve it. We certainly do. Great top three tips there, Dave. Thanks for that. Anytime. And, and, and just that third tip there, uh, you, you mentioned about the training and the embracing of training, and, and we've got a training show coming up this week, actually, which has got some really interesting points about that. So, yeah, you know, an expensive problem, it's got to be solved, and I think the investment should be from almost the ground up with looking at the initial staff and the, the original staff that have been running systems and, and looking how, for, you know, helping to further their career with existing training as well or implementing new some computer-based training that is going to be something that's going to, um, you know, work for, for them and work for the best interest of the company. So the company isn't facing um, a sort of a, a resentment from the inner core of the staff and some sort of a revolt as it could do from inner core staff and like you say resulting in bankruptcy or some sort of a larger acquisition down the line you know I think that's uh, it's really core cool that the the investments putting in the right place for training isn't it yeah it has to be proactive uh, now this is something you can think about um, you know two three years down the road I think kicking the can 
is just going to get you deeper in trouble. It's going to be very difficult to fix the business, if not impossible. So true. So true. Dave, thanks for being part of the C-Suite show this week. Great to have you on. It's always glad to be Always good to be here, Brad. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Dave. And remember, you can get Dave on Twitter. So you can get David on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. Uh, I myself on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Thanks for watching. We do hope you enjoyed watching the show. You can uh, become part of the Nelson Hilliard tribe as well and find out all the loads of this uh, stuff that's going on social media, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and obviously YouTube with all the shows that we do. So remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos with your friends and your colleagues. And click that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the... Uh, future releases that come out. So look, again, thanks for watching and until next week.